Hey, this is Dylan Andrews with EarTrainingForGuitar.com and in this video I want to show you two different ways that songs commonly go outside of the key. And the first way is by borrowing chords. Now borrowing chords is when you take from the parallel minor or major. If I'm in the key of C major, so in the key of C major we've got a C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. These are the chords that are in the key of C major. Now if I wanted to borrow, you can only borrow from the parallel minor. Parallel minor of C major is C minor. Parallel keys share the same root, but the majors and minors are flipped. So if I'm in the key of A major, the parallel minor would be A minor. If I'm in the key of F major, the parallel minor would be F minor, and so on. So what I can do is if I'm in the key of C major, and I'm playing around on that key, I can take any chord from C minor. And in order to take a chord from C minor, you need to know what chords are actually in C minor. So in C minor, we've got a C minor chord. Then we have a D diminished, an E flat major. Then we have an F minor, G minor. And then we've got an A flat major. And then we have a B flat major. So those are the chords in the key of C minor. So if I'm playing in C major, I can do around one, five, and then I can borrow this E flat major chord. So I go. And then I'm also borrowing that A flat chord right there. So you can take any ones that you want from the parallel. And this works in the other way as well. So if I'm in the key of C minor, I can borrow from the parallel major. So if I'm in C minor, I'm going one, four minor, which is in the key, G minor, which is in the key, and then A minor, which comes from C major. So that A minor would be borrowed. So you can take from either or. And if you've liked this video so far, please like and subscribe so I can get this video out to as many musicians as possible. The second most common way that songs go out of key is by using secondary dominant chords. Now, a secondary dominant chord, what it does is it looks at a chord within the key that you're in, and it goes up a fifth interval from there. All right? And if you're unfamiliar with what a fifth interval is, it's just seven frets. So, let's go back to the key of C. All right. What I can do is I can look at any chord within the key of C, and then I just go up a fifth from there, and then I've got the secondary dominant chord that I can use. So let's look at the A minor. So if I were to go up a fifth from here, I would get E. And again, if you're not familiar with how to go up a fifth, you can just go up seven frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I get an E. Now normally in the key of C, E is minor. But here, with the secondary dominant, we can do one of two things. We can either just do a dominant chord, so an E7, or we could just do an E major. The term dominant doesn't necessarily mean dominant 7, it's a quality of chord, but you could do either. So I could have that C, which is very, very common chord to use. We got C, E, probably heard that a ton of times, F, G. Now you could listen to this and say, oh, that's the three chord but major. Another common name for this is this is the five of six. Because I went to the sixth chord in the key and then I went up a fifth. So that's another common name of it. And to do one more example of this, let's say that we looked at the two chord. So if I did the two chord, which in the key of C is D minor, and I went up a fifth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I would get A. So I can use A major or A dominant, the A7 chord. And I could put that anywhere I want. So I could go C to A dominant. E, there's no secondary dominant chord we just did. Back to C. So these are very common ways that songs go outside of keys. And one way that you can train your ear on these is by playing through all the different options and then listening and trying to memorize the sound of these. 
Another good thing to do is to play chord progressions and make recordings for yourself so that you can listen back to and then guess what the answer is. That way you can do this all day in the car or whatever. You can be listening to this and training your ear while actually using your instrument. But if you'd rather have something that's already been built and made for you that you can just listen to, watch, and learn, I have a course called Complete Ear Mastery. This is a full in-depth ear training course created specifically for guitar players to help you learn how to have a highly trained ear and become the guitar player you want to be. You can get the link to that in the description below, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you at the next one.